Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here and today we're going to talk about renting and driving a car in Ukraine because there's a lot of differences and a lot of similarities and at the same time there's a lot of weird things that you have to do in order to get a car. So before we get started make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications and you give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. So let's say that you want to go to Ukraine and you want to rent a car. First thing is you want to go ahead and try to rent it two months in advance because, as you know, the exchange rates and things are actually a lot cheaper here in Ukraine. But when you rent things the day of, it turns out it's a lot more money. Now, because right now in the United States and around the world, there's a shortage of cars, whether it be rental cars or brand new cars because of those chips pretty much not being manufactured, things are a lot more expensive. But if you kind of compare the price of cars right now in Ukraine, it's probably the price of what it would have been before the pandemic per car. It's about $25 or $30 per day, which really isn't that bad. Now, I rented a Ford Fiesta, and Ford Fiestas are really horrible cars, good on like miles per gallon, but just an awful car to drive. And when you rent a car, once again, it's, you know, it's $25 or $30 per day. But there's a weird thing that they do here differently what's in the States. In the States, they hold like maybe like a $500 deposit on your credit card here. You give them $400 cash. They don't even have a credit card on file. It's kind of like a trust system, just a little bit, but they also have a copy of your passport and your driver's license. So you don't want to mess around with your car and make sure you're following all the rules and make sure you're not crashing this thing or bumping it or getting scratches on it. First, let me just show you the car because it's kind of interesting on how they get cars here. Because I have a Ford Fiesta, this is what it looks like over here. You know how like in the States, your car gets totaled, they send it to auction, they get sent somewhere else, it gets fixed up and used again. Well, a lot of those cars, they get sent to European countries. You know, it's an import and it's damaged. They get it, they fix it up and they go ahead and rent it out. And that's kind of what happened here with this Fiesta. Let me flip the camera around for you guys. So you're looking here, this actually translates to imported from America. You see CarMax here, obviously an American company. When you walk around, you notice that there is definitely some kind of damage. This thing was totaled and sent over here. I mean, the hood isn't barely on. This keeps flipping up <laughs> the emblem. It's not even on the car. It's, it's pretty much falling apart. And then on top of that, you can tell that it's definitely been damaged. The skin was reapplied and it was rusted all the way through. I don't know if you can actually see that rust marks. Yeah. Now, when you do rent the car, you obviously have insurance that comes with it. They give you registration, which is kind of nice. It's actually on this card right here. It's kind of hard to see. It's got holographics on it, which is pretty cool. And it pretty much is just a registration of the car when it expires. This one actually just recently came in. It says uh, 5-22, so May 22nd, 2021. Kind of awesome. Back to that whole total thing and coming to the States. A rent sign and an engine sign. Well, that's fun. Also, please be prepared. There are kittens that will literally run into your car and want to drive away with you. I know, they're cute, but you can't take them. Now keep in mind, everything is in kilometers. You're gonna see 60 kilometers, 70, 80, so on and so forth. Um, because I'm driving an American car, we have miles per hour on top and kilometers underneath of it. So just keep in, um, keep in mind, when you're doing really 100 kilometers, you're doing what, about 65-ish sort of? So make sure you keep an eye on that. It's not 70 miles per hour, it's 70 kilometers and you will get pulled over because cops pull everyone over on these roads. Now let's go over some of the signs you're gonna see while you're driving because they're a lot different. Your speed limit signs are gonna be circled with a red outline, so this is 70 kilometers per hour. The yellow means to be cautious while going through there. You can look above it. The reason why you're being cautious is because there's a traffic light coming up and there's also a crosswalk. Here you can see construction signs. They're triangles with guys digging in there and you can see the arrows pointing to where the construction is. Now let's go through traffic lights because they do them very differently. Some lights just stay red and then out of nowhere will go yellow and then green to indicate like there's a warning that's coming. Some other ones have a long countdown, like this one's got 40 seconds, and the green arrow means you can turn. Other ones just have a countdown, then will go to yellow, and then go green like this one here. And the crosswalks are sort of like the stage where it has a countdown for red, and also a countdown for how much time while it's green. Now a lot of cities and villages have different ways of indicating that you've entered their city. Some of them are concrete structures like this, while well, other ones have cool symbols on top. 
but the most common one you're going to see is a blue sign with the actual name of the town like this one. And when you're leaving a city, they put a red line through the name of the town slash village to indicate that you're leaving that area. They also do that with other signs like this controlled border area. One interesting thing for you guys to know is that when you're passing someone, as a common courtesy, people do tend to get into the shoulder. Now, as a way to say thank you, you'll see in a second, this person put their hazard lights on once as like a, hey, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Now that you have signs pretty much all mastered, let's go ahead and fill up the gas in this car. Remember, because we're in Europe, it's not gallons, it's liters. We're in liters here, just so you know. So the price over here is, looks like it's 28 a liter. US dollar is about 26. So just over a dollar per liter. And we're going with 95. The same thing in the States. And you can see here, you're pretty much at 88,000, which would be converted into about 25, 26, about 34 dollars to fill up the gas tank. Now that conversion rate changes daily, so it's a little bit different in the end. I mean, this is what my receipt looks like. I don't know if you can actually see that. It may not be focusing on it. So you could do the math based off of either 25 or 26 US. So one to 25 or 26. Now let's go for a drive. So there you guys go, that is driving in Ukraine in pretty much a nutshell. I mean, today we drove about eight hours from Kiev out to Lubyshev. A uh, little traffic on off, that's why it's eight. Normally it's about seven, but it's not too bad. The roads are good on the highways, bad on the side streets. You get little towns like this that don't even have a road. Mostly just dirt that's been pounded down with like some brick here and there. Uh, so when you're driving rental cars, make sure you keep an eye out for flying rocks. Stay far away from trucks because they will charge you an arm and a leg to get that stuff fixed. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for joining me if you haven't done so yet. And if you want to check out other videos, uh, make sure you go ahead and click the playlist. It's Ukraine or Joey in Ukraine 2021. We have videos from 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016. So pretty much you got to go through and check out all those videos because we detail a lot of other things. And I got more videos for you guys coming up. So if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey. I'll see you later. Bye.